So open banking and open finance are two related concepts. Open banking essentially looks at giving permission access to consumers' data, to third-party payment providers or technology companies so that actually they can build innovative solutions, but all with the consent of consumer. So everything in the benefit of consumer, that is what open banking looks at. And open finance is essentially just an extension of open banking where it enables financial data, not just bank-related data, not just account and transaction-related data, but a wider ecosystem participation of financial companies into this and opening up that data on the consent of consumers so that in, for a variety of purposes where new innovative products and services can, can be enabled for, for easing the life of a consumer. Open banking and open finance is adopted in very different ways across the globe. Uh, different countries have used very different mechanisms, like um, if you look at UK and Europe, they've gone regulator-driven approach where UK is following CMA, um, in Europe they have implemented Payment Services Directive. In, uh, if you look at US, it's completely market-driven and competition-driven approach where Plaid is actually enabling open banking. If you look at countries like India, they're going a mixed approach where regulator is laying down the infrastructure, but it's basically the innovation and services and offering, product offering is being offered by market competition. So it's very much um, a comprehensive suite of how uh, different countries are going in, but with the intent of benefiting the life of an end consumer. So I think the key principles which govern open banking essentially First, consent. You cannot have access to consumer data without the consent of a consumer. Second is secure flow of data. So when banks or financial companies opening up consumer data, it needs to be opened up in a secure way. Currently, what we see in instant EFT, it's, it's mistakenly understood as something like an open banking where basically you know, fintech companies are just going in and building solutions on top of banking solutions and just going in without having a consent of data, without consumer actually being notified that this is not my banking channel where I'm actually logging in my password. So it's very scary. So open banking removes, eliminates that and it allows for consumer to provide consent so that secure transmission of data can go through from banks and financial services companies to technology companies so that they can build innovative offering. And the third principle obviously is consumer data is consumer's data, it's nobody else's. Even if bank has taken like 20 years to gather that consumer data, the ownership of that data is not bank's ownership, it's consumer's data. So we all need to fundamentally adapt and acknowledge that my data is my data. It's sitting with you doesn't mean that you own that data. And that is that those are the key principles which basically governs open open banking. Open banking is the first steps first step towards uh, building a connected experience. It allows for banking to be contextualized and embedded into a customer journey. What I mean by that is that is in the in in the tomorrow of uh, financial services you may be able to ask Alexa or Siri to do an investment on your behalf, to open an account on your behalf. You, if you are going out to buy a car or a TV and you're wearing those mixed reality glasses, you may, your mixed reality glass may tell you that just looking at TV, can you afford it or not? So it's almost like enabling in your day-to-day -day life the financial services, so embedding that into your financial services. So that's how it basically embeds, it's, it contextualizes banking. It doesn't, so that banking doesn't feel like banking because banking to me sounds very boring, although I come from payments background. Banking to me is like going into the branch, standing there for in a queue for, for, for a length of period and then talking to a person who's, who looks very boring and has, doesn't, doesn't have any quirk. So that is not, so we want to get away from that experience and want to build more and more connected experience so that the consumer can actually feel banking as part of his daily life. So that is what open banking does. 
So digital transformation, what digital transformation does is it enables, it lays the foundation for things like innovation where open banking sits. But currently, if we look at it, what we are from a, from a channel perspective, what we're doing is we're trying to retrofit the physical branch experience into digital. So we're not changing the behavior, we're not changing the way things should happen. We're just essentially taking the physical experiencing and retrofitting into digital world. So the experience still remains the same and that is not the experience which consumer demands. They want frictionless. They want banking to not be felt like banking. They don't want that I'm making a payment to someone means it's a daunting experience for me. So it basically, digital transformation is required because without that, if we have legacy systems, if we don't have APIs, we may not even go to open banking. So open banking is the next step because it's all open banking sits on APIs. It is enabled by APIs. But having said that, we don't want them, we don't bank, want banks in the name of digital transformation spending so much and essentially retrofitting the same physical branch experience into digital. So that's something which we don't want. So open banking truly empowers um, businesses to design by first principles. What does first principle tell us? First principle tells us that go back to the basics. Don't just build over and over and over on top of each other. If it's a crappy process, don't just go on and building on over crappy process. Rather, go back to basics. If you think that your consumers are not, um, are not the, if low LSM or let's say, some segment of consumers are not your consumers. They don't fit in. Do not exclude them. Try and change the behavior. So how do you do that? Why, do, why are banks still, still sitting with the same way of credit scoring? If you are actually, you know, if you want to go on and take, it and take credit, they still look at all your credit, past credit risk, and do the credit scoring. Why can you not do credit scoring based on your current existing transaction flow, which tells me what is my behavior? How much I am I, it's not just how much am I earning, what, how, how am I, what is my behavior in terms of my transaction, my payments, how am I doing? So look at all the aspects. If some customer segment does not fit in to your likable customer segment, if you don't want to target that customer, do not exclude them from banking rather change their behavior, influence that their behavior so they can actually be included into the financial service sector. Why do banks have to always do credit scoring based on traditional methods? Why can they not look at your transactions, your payments and your behavior to do credit scoring? For savings, why is always based on APRs? Why can we not do savings based on behavior? For example, if I'm active, I'm, I'm living a healthy life, why cannot, can I not get a better interest rate? If I'm, I'm driving nicely, um, why can I not get a better interest rate? So why is it, so, so design by uh, first principles talks to us in terms of not sticking to the same protocols which we have been following all along, but change it as we are changing, as consumer behavior is changing and adopt new ways so that you can actually bring a larger segment of consumers and include and enable truly empower financial inclusion. It's, it's a notion that fintechs and tech fins are the threat to banks, whereas I do not see it that way. I see fintechs and tech fins are complementing. So they have very different business model and an area to play in the value chain. Banks do what they do best. They have trust of the customer. The customer at the end of the day trust bank. Fintechs can play around technology and put up innovative solutions. So if we all work together, we win this game. If we all work apart, neither fintechs and tech fins are gonna win, neither banks are gonna win because we, banking's gonna stay like banks. It's gonna be traditional, it's gonna be um, not, not an exponential innovation and fintechs obviously cannot win because they need support from the banks. They can't, they need the regulatory space. So banks are good at regulation, banks are good at compliance, banks are good at um, trust, earning the trust of the customer while fintechs are good at innovation. So we all need to work together to be, to enable this. From our perspective, I think 
countries who are going into the journey of open banking, I feel like we need to not just look at technology, we just not need to look at protocols, we just not need to look at APIs and standardization. We need to look at what data and how much of the data can actually be exposed without the threat to the consumer, with the consent of consumer, so that we empower the end consumer. So with the aim to empower the consumer, we all need to create that safe space for all these organizations in the ecosystem so that everyone feels that they are winning in the game and nobody's losing or cannibalizing others' business. So that ecosystem needs to be enabled while technology is important, while standardization is important, but the bigger aspect is what is the bigger purpose? It's actually to ease the life of consumer. So that is what I feel is important.